Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. It is already time to go ahead and do February's Book of the Month predictions. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and just have to jump right in here because there are actually quite a lot of notable releases coming out in February and several of them I actually feel are strong contenders for February book of the month selections. And that's actually going to leave my new release video for February a little bit sparse, if I'm honest, just because I have so many mentioned in this video. Now, as always, we are going to go ahead and start with how I did for January. And I'm quite pleased with how I did for January, actually. For the month of February, book of the month had five curated monthly selections. Out of those five, four of them were actually selections that I had made in my January book of the month prediction video, including Mercury by Amy Jo Burns, The Fury by Alex Michaelides, Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin, and The Bullet Swallower by Elizabeth Gonzalez James. The fifth book was First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston, which I didn't mention in the prediction video, but I did talk about in my new release video. So it was certainly on my radar. So book of the month really knocked it out of the park with its January selections, and I was quite pleased. And then they actually had only three new add-ons for the month of January. I'm not going to be talking about The Butcher and the Blackbird by Bryn Weaver or Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross as both of those were late add-ons in December. So those were already available as of January 1st when all of the other selections were released. The three add-ons were Northwoods by Amy Peace. That was not one that I featured in my book of the month prediction video but that was another one that was on my radar in the new release video. So that was out there. Familia by Lauren E. Rico was another add-on. That is I believe a non-fiction memoir that was not on my radar at all. And then thankfully we had only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham, which I did feature in that prediction video. And I was very happy to see it as an add-on selection. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't be there at all because her past releases have been featured in December for January release of the book. So I was very glad to see it and I was able to snag it. Now, as I mentioned, I have quite a few predictions to talk about for February. So we are going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to try to make this as brief as I possibly can. So I will probably not be reading the full synopsis of every single one of the books on this list because we would probably be here for a while. So I'm just going to do my best to give you a brief idea of what each book is about. As a reminder, I break my book of the month predictions into five genre categories and each category is only allowed to have five predictions. That is just meant to kind of give myself a parameter to work with so I'm not just basically including every single new release that is coming out in February. It makes it so I really have to be choosy about what I'm featuring in these videos. So as usual, we are going to be starting with the mystery, thriller, horror genre category and this category is actually full. And we are actually going to start with the newest release from AJ Finn called End of Story. I had no idea that a new release from AJ Finn was coming out until I was researching anticipated releases for 2024 and this popped up on my radar. Now if I remember correctly The Woman in the Window was a book of the month selection either as an add-on or monthly featured selection in the past when it was released and that makes it more likely that this one is going to be featured as well. So I wanted to go ahead and highlight it here in this video. So this is following Sebastian Trapp who is a reclusive mystery novelist. He writes to Nikki Hunter who is an expert in detective fiction saying he is going to be dead in three months. And so he thinks he only has mere months to live. And so he invites Nikki to his San Francisco mansion to help draft his life story. And then you're also going back 20 years earlier in the past to 1999 when Sebastian's first wife and teenage son vanished from different locations never to be seen again. Did the perfect crime writer commit the perfect crime? And why has he emerged from seclusion two decades later to allow a stranger to dig into his past? As Nikki attempts to weave together the strands of Sebastian's life, she becomes obsessed with discovering the truth. While Madeline, Sebastian's daughter, begins to question what her beloved father might actually know about that long ago night. And when when a corpse appears in the family's koi pond, both women are shocked to find that the past isn't gone, it's just waiting. So I am very intrigued by the synopsis of that. I actually really enjoyed The Woman in the Window, and so I'm excited to get into this one, although I will say that early reviews are not great. It's got a 3.55 rating on Goodreads, but only 40 ratings, so that could easily go up. But this is definitely one of the more notable releases, and it could definitely have a strong chance of being featured on Book of the Month. Another repeat author that we could see featured in the horror category for Book of the Month in February is Amanda J. Atisa. Her newest release called Island Witch is coming out in February and she was featured in the thriller category I believe it was when her release You're Invited came out which is why I wanted to mention this one here. Now this says inspired by Sri Lankan folklore award-winning author Amanda Jayatisa turns her feverish gothic tinged talent to late 19th century Sri Lanka where the daughter of a traditional demon priest relentlessly bullied by peers and accused of witchcraft herself tries to solve the mysterious attacks that have been terrorizing her coastal village. So this sounds like it's a little bit of a mix of horror slash speculative fiction 
Mansion. I'm not entirely sure if there's anything speculative about this, but this is definitely firmly placed in the horror category with the featuring of Sri Lankan folklore and a demon priest and things like that. I have never read anything by Amanda Jayatisa, but if you liked her previous release, that thriller release, maybe you would be interested in this one as well. Next, we actually have a debut thriller called Everyone Who Can Forgive Me Is Dead by Jenny Hollander. I'm primarily mentioning it here because of its debut status and it definitely sounds along the lines of something that Book of the Month might feature. It says nine years ago with the world's eyes on her, Charlie Colbert fled. Press and the police called Charlie a witness to the nightmarish events at her elite graduate school on Christmas Eve, events known to the public as Scarlet Christmas, though Charlie knows she was much more than that. Now Charlie has meticulously rebuilt her life. She's the editor-in-chief of a major magazine engaged to the golden child of the publishing industry and hell-bent on never ever letting her guard down again. But when a buzzy film made by one of Charlie's former classmates threatens to shatter everything she's worked for, Charlie realizes how much she's changed in nine years. Now she's not going to let anything, not even the people she once loved most, get in her way. So it definitely sounds like there was something bad that happened in the past. Our main character kind of knows what happens and now there's something that's going to threaten to release those secrets and she's desperate to kind of keep them hidden and she's going to do everything that she can to protect the life that she's carefully built for herself. It sounds a little bit vague. It sounds a little bit generic, but I am intrigued. I would certainly be willing to pick this up from Book of the Month if it was featured. And like I said, it is a debut and Book of the Month loves their debut authors. So I thought that it would be a strong contender for this category. Another one that caught my attention is a book called The Fortune Seller by Rachel Kapelke Dale. It follows our main character, Rosie McAllister, who has worked for years to fit in with her wealthy friends on the Yale equestrian team. But when she comes back from her junior year abroad with newfound confidence, she finds the group has been infiltrated by the mysterious Annalise Tattinger. A talented tarot reader and a brilliant writer, Annalise is unlike anyone Rosie has ever met. But when one of their friends notices money disappearing from her bank account, Annalise's place in the circle is thrown into question. As the women turn against each other, the group's unspoken tensions and assumptions lead to devastating consequences. It's only after graduation when Rosie begins a job at a Manhattan hedge fund and she begins to uncover Annalise's true identity and how her place in their elite Yale set was no accident. Is it too late for Rosie to make right what went wrong or does everyone's luck run out at some point? Set in the heady days of the early aughts, the fortune seller is a haunting examination of class, ambition, and the desires that shape our lives. Sounds like it could be a little bit of rich people behaving badly. I'm not entirely sure what I'm getting from this story. I don't like the vibes I'm getting in terms of maybe toxic female friendships or things like that. Y'all know that I hate those tropes in books, but this is actually one that I have seen going around. I do consider it a little bit more on the notable side for releases in February. And so I wanted to go ahead and mention it here, especially since it could have a slight dark academia twinge considering this is set at least partially in Yale in the early aughts. So we're going to see. I probably would be willing to give it a go if it was featured on Book of the Month. So keep your eye out for this one. And then the last one in this category I chose just because the vibes entirely scream Book of the Month to me. And it is called The Resort by Sarah Ox. And it actually says here that it's for readers of Rachel Hawkins. And we all know that Book of the Month has featured Rachel Hawkins multiple times. It says a searing vacation thriller set on a remote island in Thailand following two mysterious women, a charismatic group of expats, and the one murder poised to bring their paradise crashing down. So yes, this is going to be definitely like more isolation thriller-esque. This definitely is giving me Rachel Hawkins vibes, as well as vibes of one they featured last year called She Started It, which I didn't read at all. But just the overall atmosphere and plot and just aesthetic of the book itself is really just giving me Book of the Month vibes. Like I really feel strongly that this could be a contender for Book of the Month. So that's why I wanted to mention it here. All right, moving right along into the romance category, I only have three to talk to you about today. The first is a book called How You Get the Girl by Anita Kelly. I am mentioning this here because I believe Anita Kelly has been featured before on Book of the Month and so they are likely to feature another one of her stories again. I do believe that this is a sapphic romance and it says chemistry sizzles in this workplace rom-com set in the world of high school basketball from the author of Love and Other Disasters. It follows Julie Parker who coaches a high school basketball team and she is ready for the challenge of smart mouth Vanessa Lerner who joins her team but what she's not ready for is Vanessa's new foster parent Ellie Cochran, former University of Tennessee basketball star. So it sounds like it's going to be a romance between Julie Parker and Elle Cochran. If that sounds intriguing to you, if you love a good sapphic romance, if you've read Anita Kelly before, be on the lookout for this one in February. Another author that has been previously featured on Book of the Month was Tia Williams and her newest release, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, is coming out in February. This is one that could easily transfer into the contemporary genre more than the romance genre, but I did go ahead and place it here just because romance is a big part of the story. Leap years are a strange enchanted time and for some, even a single February can be life-changing. Ricky Wilde has many talents, but being a Wilde isn't one of them. As the impulsive artistic daughter of a powerful Atlanta dynasty, she's the opposite of her famous socialite sisters. Where there are long-stemmed roses, she's a dandelion, an adorable bloom that's actually a weed born to float wherever the wind flows. In her bones, Ricky knows that somewhere a different, more exciting life awaits her. When regal nonagenarian Miss Della invites her to rent the bottom floor of her Harlem brownstone, Ricky jumps at the chance for a fresh beginning. She leaves behind her family wealth and chaotic romantic decisions to realize her dream of opening a flower shop. And just beneath the 
the surface of her new neighborhood, the music stories and dazzling drama of the Harlem Renaissance still simmers. One evening in February, as the heady, curiously off-season scent of night-blooming jasmine fills the air, Ricky encounters a handsome, deeply mysterious stranger who knocks her world off balance in the most unexpected way. Set against the backdrop of modern Harlem and Renaissance glamour, a love song for Ricky Wilde is a swoon-worthy love story of two passionate artists drawn to the magic, romance, and opportunity of New York and whose lives are uniquely and irreversibly linked. So I just absolutely love the synopsis of that. It sounds absolutely beautiful. I do think that this is a top contender for the romance or even just like the contemporary section of Book of the Month in February. So be on the lookout for this one. I am actually very intrigued by the synopsis of that. And then the final one that I have for this category is a book called Girls with Bad Reputations by Gio Axelrod. I apologize if I'm pronouncing her name incorrectly. This is a second book in her Lily series and I do believe the first book was featured on Book of the Month in the past. And Book of the Month really does like to complete series a lot of the time. So if they have featured book one, they may feature book two. It'll more than likely be an add-on, not a monthly featured selection, but I would certainly not be surprised to see it there. Once upon a time, the pressure to be a perfect daughter nearly broke Kayla Whitman. Desperate to find an outlet away from her controlling mother, she picked up a pair of drumsticks, forever altering the rhythm of her life. Since then, she's been determined to make her own way, finding her home with her bandmates, even as she fights to keep her past and her present firmly separate. Things were simple though, when the Lilies were playing local gigs at dive bars, but now they're on their first official tour and all Kayla can see are warning signs. Desperate to escape the worry churning inside her, Kayla finds solace in quiet tour bus driver Ty Baldwin and discovers in him a kindred spirit like no one she's ever met before. Their connection is immediate and intense, but when increasing scrutiny from the press threatens to destroy Ty's newfound peace and Kayla's carefully guarded secrets, Kayla's forced to make an impossible choice, pursue her dream and risk destroying everyone around her or give in and lose the chance of her ever becoming the person she's always known that she could be. This is another one I'm not really familiar with. I never read the first book in this series, but if you did and enjoyed it, you might want to go ahead and pick this one up. All right, moving right along into historical fiction. This category is another full one. We have a lot of decent historical releases coming out in February, starting with The Fox Wife by Yangtze Chu, who was previously featured on Book of the Month with her release. I believe it was called The Night Tiger, if I'm not mistaken. From what I can tell, this is set in Manchuria in 1908, and I'm just going to read this blurb here where it says, New York Times bestselling author Yangtze Chu brilliantly explores a world of mortals and spirits, humans and beasts, and their dazzling intersection. The Fox Wife is a stunning novel about a winter full of mysterious deaths, a mother seeking revenge, and old folk tales that may very well be true. So it sounds like there could be a little bit of folklore involved in this, so maybe a fairy tale-esque aspect. In some ways, I'm kind of getting the Bear and the Nightingale vibes by Catherine Arden from this, so if that sounds interesting to you, this to me is a very top contender for historical fiction for Book of the Month in February. And then of course, the strongest contender in my opinion, and one that I am the most anxious to see featured on Book of the Month, is Kristen Hanna's newest release called The Women, and this is set in the time frame of Vietnam, which she has not yet covered before, and I'm very, very excited to see what she can do. I've heard rave reviews about this book so far saying it is her best yet and I am beyond hyped to get it whether it's featured on book of the month or not. I'm just going to read this where it says the women is the story of one woman gone to war but it shines a light on all women who put themselves in harm's way and whose sacrifice and commitment to their country has too often been forgotten. A novel about deep friendships and bold patriotism, women is a richly drawn story with a memorable heroine whose idealism and courage under fire will come to define an era. I just got like goosebumps reading that. I cannot wait. I cannot even tell you how excited I am. Kristen Hanna is one of my favorite authors of all time. I just feel like her novels are not only beautifully written, but she just brings the characters to life in such a vivid way. And she always does so against a backdrop that is often harrowing and dangerous and raw. And I absolutely love the way that she's able to do it. They're always very well researched. So this is one that I will snag up in a heartbeat if it is featured on Book of the Month for sure. So this next one is actually one that I feel like I've talked about before, either in a new release video or a Book of the Month prediction video, but it is only coming out in February. So I don't know if I'm misremembering or if maybe it was coming out prior and then they changed the release date, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it here. It is a book called The Phoenix Crown and it is being written by Kate Quinn along with Janie Chang. It is set in San Francisco, 1906, and a city bustling with newly minted millionaires and scheming upstarts. Two very different women hope to change their fortune. Gemma, a golden haired, silver voiced soprano whose career desperately needs rekindling, and Su Ling, a resolute Chinatown embroideress who is determined to escape an arranged marriage. Their paths cross when they are drawn into the orbit of Henry Thornton, a charming railroad magnate whose extraordinary collection of Chinese antiques includes the fabled Phoenix Crown, a legendary relic of Beijing's fallen summer palace. His patronage offers Gemma and Su Ling the chance of a lifetime, but their lives are thrown into turmoil when a devastating earthquake rips San Francisco apart and Thornton disappears, leaving behind a mystery reaching further than anyone could have imagined. Until the Phoenix Crown reappears five years later at a sumptuous Paris costume ball, drawing Gemma and Su Ling together in one last desperate quest for justice. So that sounds very interesting. Set in San Francisco in the early 1900s, that is definitely a time period you do not often see covered in historical fiction. So this is one I would not be disappointed to see featured on Book of the Month in February. This next one is one that I've actually seen going around and that's what put it on my radar and 
made me feel like it could be a strong contender. It is a book called The Turtle House by Amanda Churchill. This says, moving between late 1990s small town Texas to pre-World War II Japan and occupy Tokyo, an emotionally engaging literary debut about a grandmother and granddaughter who connect over a beloved lost place and the secrets they both carry. A story of intergenerational friendship, family, coming of age, identity, and love, The Turtle House illuminates the hidden lives we lead, the secrets we hold close, and what it truly means to find home again when it feels lost forever. This is another one that's really intriguing based on setting and context. Again, this sounds like it's going to be another very poignant character-driven story between a grandmother and her granddaughter. And this is actually also another one that I might consider picking up if it's featured because I just like the sounds of it. It sounds like it's going to be very beautiful overall. And then the very last book for this category is a book called A Wild Heavenly Place by Robin Olivera. It says, from the New York Times bestselling author of My Name is Mary Sutter comes a sweeping story of star-crossed lovers and the birth of Seattle, which is very intriguing to me as somebody who has visited Seattle many times and lived in Washington for three years. It says, poignant and lyrical, a wild and heavenly place is an ode to the Pacific Northwest, to those courageous enough to chase the American dream, and to a love so powerful it endures beyond distance and beyond hope. I'm not going to read anything more about that. I am kind of sold just based on that brief blurb. I think that this is going to be very atmospheric, and I think it's going to be personally connected to me just based off of my history with Washington and the Pacific Northwest and Seattle. So I would love to see this featured on Book of the Month, either as an add-on or a monthly curated selection. All right, now we are moving on into the contemporary slash literary fiction category, starting with a book called A Fire So Wild by Sarah Ruiz Grossman. With the emotional echoes of little fires everywhere and the lush atmosphere of disappearing earth, a riveting debut novel in which a wildfire creeps towards Berkeley, California, igniting tensions as characters from all walks of life confront the injustices lying beneath the city's surface. As a wildfire threatens Berkeley, the city's inhabitants are forced to reckon with the cracks in the lives they've built. Abigail, a wealthy homeowner, decides to throw a lavish birthday in a hillside mansion to raise money for the city's newest affordable housing project and prove to her family that she's made something worthwhile of her life. Sunny, a construction worker who sleeps in a van along the bay shore, is in the running for an apartment, but only if enough funds are raised at the party. As the heat and smoke from the approaching blaze descend upon the town, tensions rise and residents young and old, haves and have-nots, confront the inequities laid bare and the fragility of building a life in a world on fire. Alternating among a colorful cast of characters, A Fire So Wild is a timely, tautly paced novel that questions why, when everything burns, not everyone is left with scars. So again, another very atmospheric setting. And again, another one that kind of has a little bit of a personal tie to me as I was born and raised in California. And I know how easily that state can be set on fire. So this is certainly one that has caught my attention. And this is perhaps one of the strongest contenders I feel for this category for Book of the Month. Another book that I've seen going around, and it definitely seems like something Book of the Month would feature, is Acts of Forgiveness by Maura Cheeks. Every American waits with bated breath to see whether or not the country's first female president will pass the Forgiveness Act. The bill would allow Black families to claim up to $175,000 if they can prove they are the descendants of slaves. And for ambitious single mother Willie Revel, the bill could be a long-awaited form of redemption. A decade ago, Willie gave up her burgeoning journalism career to help run her father's struggling construction company in Philadelphia, and she has reluctantly put family first without being able to forget who she might have become. Now she's back living with her parents and her young daughter while trying to keep her family from going into bankruptcy. Could the Forgiveness Act uncover her forgotten roots while also helping save their beloved home and her father's life work? In order to qualify, she must first prove that the Revels are descended from slaves, but the rest of the family isn't as eager to dig up the past. Her mother is adopted, her father doesn't trust the government and believes working with a morally corrupt employer is the better way to save their business, and her daughter is just trying to make it through the fifth grade at her elite private school without attracting unwanted attention. It is up to Willie to verify their ancestry and save her family, but as she delves into their history, Willie begins to learn just how complicated family and forgiveness could be. With powerful insight and moving prose, Acts of Forgiveness asks how history shapes who we become and to consider the weight of success when it's achieved despite incredible odds and ultimately what leaving behind a legacy truly means. So that is certainly interesting. It broaches the topic of what it would mean if our country offered reparations for owning slaves and slavery and things like that, but also there's a lot more complicated family dynamics going on in here as she is trying to research her ancestry along with a lot of obstacles that her family does not want to uncover or they don't want to help her. So that actually sounds very harrowing, very raw, very poignant. So if that sounds interesting to you, again, this is another one that has certainly been going around and it definitely seems like something that would be right up Book of the Month's alley. And then another notable literary fiction release that is coming out and the final one that I'm going to be talking about in this category is a book called Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. This says that it is an eagerly awaited follow-up to his Pulitzer Prize finalist debut, There There. So I don't necessarily think you need to read There There first, but it sounds like this is kind of like a prequel novel in that it encompasses the events leading up to what happened in There There. It says, extending his constellation of narratives into the past and the future, Tommy Orange once again delivers a story that is by turns shattering and wondrous. A book piercing in its poetry, sorrow, and rage, a masterful follow-up to his already classic first novel and a devastating indictment of America's 
bore on its own people. So wow, that sounds very, very hard hitting. I am not familiar with Tommy Orange or his first book, but if that is something that you have read and you might be interested in diving more firmly into that story, this is one to certainly watch out for. All right, and then we are moving on into the very final category, sci-fi, fantasy, and magical realism. Now I actually have four in this category, which is unusual. This is typically the smallest category that I have every single month. I'm not necessarily sure how strongly I feel about these contenders. In fact, two of them I'm mentioning only because they have been featured authors in the past. We're going to start with Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Allie Hazelwood, as you know, every single one of her books has been featured on Book of the Month, but those have been her contemporaries. Even her recent young adult contemporary was featured. Bride is Allie Hazelwood's first foray into paranormal romance. So I don't know if Book of the Month is going to continue its featuring of Allie Hazelwood in this regard. I do think her new contemporary, which is coming out, I believe in June, is probably going to be featured, but I'm not sure about this one. This says a dangerous alliance between a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf becomes a love deep enough to sink your teeth into. In this new paranormal romance from the number one New York Times bestselling author of Love Theoretically and The Love Hypothesis. Again, it's her first foray into paranormal romance. I have no idea whether Book of the Month is going to want to feature this, but I did feel like I needed to mention it here because like I said, every single other one of her books has been featured on Book of the Month. So I would be remiss not to have mentioned it. Another author that has been featured previously is Hafsa Faisal. I believe her other novel is called We Hunt the Flame, if I'm remembering correctly, and that was featured under the young adult category on Book of the Month. And her newest YA fantasy release, A Tempest of Tea, is coming out in February. And this is certainly one that has been getting a lot of buzz. And so because of that, I don't feel it would be out of the realm of possibility that Book of the Month would feature it again. This is actually going to be the start of a new fantasy duology. And it says that it's perfect for fans of Lee Bardugo's Six of Crows. And that's what really caught my attention. Y'all know that I'm moving very far away from YA, except in limited instance with fantasy. And so I was really kind of intrigued by that comparison to Six of Crows. It says, on the streets of White Roaring, Arthi Casimir is a criminal mastermind and collector of secrets. Her prestigious tea room transforms into an illegal bloodhouse by dark, catering to the vampires feared by society. So we have another vampire book. But when her establishment is threatened, Arthi is forced to strike an unlikely deal with an alluring adversary to save it, and she can't do the job alone. Calling upon a band of misfits, okay, there is definitely where I get the Six of Crows comparison. Arthi formulates a plan to infiltrate the dark and glittering vampire society known as the Arthurium. But not every member of her crew is on her side, and as the truth behind the heist unfolds, Arthi finds herself in the midst of a conspiracy that will threaten the world as she knows it. Dark, action-packed, and swoon-worthy, this is Hasa Faisal better than ever. I am actually very, very intrigued by the synopsis of that and the comparison to Six of Crows. I do think that this is a strong contender for this category on Book of the Month, and so I wanted to mention it here. And speaking of The Bear and the Nightingale, which I mentioned earlier, Catherine Arden actually has a new release coming out in February called The Warm Hands of Ghosts. And I can't remember offhand if Book of the Month has ever actually featured Catherine Arden, but this is certainly a very, very notable release for February. A lot of people are highly anticipating this, especially those that really love the Bear and the Nightingale series. And so I did want to mention it here instead of in the new release video, just in case Book of the Month decided to finally start featuring Catherine Arden. I'm just going to read this brief blurb. It says, during the Great War, a combat nurse searches for her brother believed dead in the trenches despite eerie signs that suggest otherwise in this hauntingly beautiful historical novel with a speculative twist. And it says here that ghosts move among the living. This is another one that sounds deeply atmospheric. I know the Bear and the Nightingale was deeply atmospheric. So if you loved that work by Catherine Arden, be sure to keep your eye out for this one in February. And the final book that I'm going to talk about in this video is one that came on my radar recently. And I don't necessarily feel strongly one way or another about whether or not this is going to be featured, but I just enjoyed the synopsis so much. It is a fantasy that surrounds books. And I would love to see Book of the Month feature this, especially since they featured Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Tours, which is another fantasy surrounding books. So that's why I wanted to mention it here. It is called The Book of Doors by Gareth Brown. It says, if you could open a door to anywhere, where would you go? In New York City, bookseller Cassie Andrews is living an unassuming life when she is given a gift by a favorite customer. It's a book, an unusual book full of strange writing and mysterious drawing. And at the very front, there is a handwritten message to Cassie telling her that this is the book of doors and that any door is every door. What Cassie is about to discover is that the book of doors is a special book that bestows an extraordinary power on whoever possesses it. And soon she and her best friend Izzy are exploring all that the book of doors can do, swept away from their quiet lives by the possibilities of traveling to anywhere they want. But the book of doors is not the only magical book in the world. There are other books that can do wondrous and dreadful things when wielded by dangerous and ruthless individuals, individuals who crave what Cassie now possesses. Suddenly, Cassie and Izzy are confronted by violence and danger, and the only person who can help them is, it seems, Drummond Fox. He is a man fleeing his own demons, a man with his own secret library of magical books that he has hidden away in the shadows for safekeeping, because there is a nameless evil out there that is hunting them all, because some doors should never be opened. So I just love the sound of that. I'm very, very intrigued by that premise. Like I said, I would love to see Book of the Month feature this, especially after they featured Inkblood Sister Scribe. And this is certainly one that is on my radar to 
pick up for sure. All right, everyone, that is it. Those are my book of the month predictions for the month of February. As always, please comment down below and let me know if you think I missed any potential book of the month contenders. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you are here, go ahead and leave me a turtle emoji in honor of the turtle house. Y'all know that I very much love seeing your comments, even the emojis, because I appreciate the engagement and it helps my channel so very much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, but typically I do too. And I would love to connect with you in any of those other videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.